Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for Hackaday.com. Today we're going to continue our series where we're using the Pololu 3Pi robot as a development board for the Atmel AT Mega 328P processor. Today we're going to divert a little bit from our uh, other topics where we've been talking specifically about how to program for the peripherals in the processor and we're just going to show a quick exercise. Uh, it's fun to play around with on the robot and uh, we're going to show how to use the line sensors in the robot. Let's go to our overhead camera and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Right here on the bottom of the robot we have five little sensors. Uh, these sensors have two little, I don't know if you can see them in the video or not, uh, two little sort of windows in them. One of them, behind one of them is an infrared LED. Behind the other is a phototransistor. Uh, originally I had thought that the processor was going to be reading these with analog to digital conversion, but that turns out to be wrong. It's actually reading them in a digital manner. Uh, and let me draw you a little diagram of of how this is uh, hooked up. So right here we have the I.O. pin from the processor. It comes out to a resistor and then we have a capacitor coming up to the positive rail and then out from here we have the phototransistor and that goes to ground. Now, this is wired up kind of like an opto-isolator, which is something that you would use uh, to connect systems that have different voltages, uh, and, but they need to communicate. Uh, you might use it when you uh, want to electrically isolate one thing from the other. Let's say this circuit had a lot of electrical noise, and this one you didn't want to uh, get any of that noise because maybe it was uh, sampling something with an analog to digital converter at very high resolution and that electrical noise would screw up your results. Uh, those are cases that you'd use a uh, opto isolator. In this case they're not really they're not connected. The, the LED is not facing the phototransistor. They're both facing outward uh, away coming coming towards the camera in this case and bouncing off and so what's happening is this LED produces light which bounces off of the table or whatever you might have your robot on and hits this. And depending on how much light hits the phototransistor uh, determines how much current it allows to flow through it. So what happens is uh, to read this sensor, uh, it's still probably not very obvious to, to you, what happens is the processor makes this pin an output. And it drives it high. It takes this capacitor and essentially removes uh, any voltage difference between it, uh, the, the two sides. Then it becomes an input. Uh, and watches how long it takes for this, uh, the voltage of the capacitor to drop to a level that uh, this pin reads a low. So, you know, over time it'll be reading high and then all of a sudden it'll drop low. And so what it does is it times the time, uh, it uh, measures the time that it takes from when it became an input, which is right here, to uh, when that drops low. And it will eventually drop low because this phototransistor uh, is leaking some current uh, out to ground. Uh, I guess technically it's maybe coming in the other way, but uh, that's what it's doing. So you're measuring this time right here. Let's go to the computer and I will show you what I am doing. Uh, 
Let me scroll down here. Find it. Okay. So I've written a routine here called read line sensor. And it takes as uh, arguments uh, scale output. If you set this to anything other than zero, what that does is it uh, scales it. Or I think maybe it has to be one. Anyway, it, uh, it scales it into the range of zero to 255, which is much uh, nicer to work with on an 8-bit processor. Uh, we have, if you are scaling it, we've got minimum and maximum. And what these represent are the, the minimum value. Pretty much if you've got a range of numbers, uh, maybe this is zero and this is 65,000. If I set my minimum to be here and my maximum to be here, then this uh, if we set scaling to be on, this will become zero and this will become 255. Uh, and then I have one more argument that says which sensor. And that lets you select you know, which, which one of these little line sensors you want to, to read from. Uh, and pretty much I, I've set, I, I've described here, I've tried to be pretty liberal with my comments. Uh, telling you how this works, but uh, pretty much I, I uh, take my sensor mask and I take the value of which sensor and I shift it. I write one to it and then I shift it over which sensor times, which when I write that to uh, the output port, uh, it allows me to drive that pin out. Anyway, it's a, it's a way that we can select the pin. I delay for a little bit of time to charge up the capacitor. In this case, I'm only uh, delaying for 10 microseconds, so it's, it's not going to take very long. And then I turn on the sensor's LED. Now this sensor would probably work without that LED on, but you'll have much more sensitivity with it on, because otherwise you're relying on ambient light and depending on whether you've gone into a shadow or something like that, it could change your results. So you'll have much better readings if you have that LED on. Uh, I'm not keeping it on all the time just as a power conservation strategy. Uh, I'm making the pin an input and then I'm uh, disabling the pull-up. Remember that these, these pins can become pull-ups based on the, uh, how you would be driving it if it were an output. And I believe if it were a one, if you're driving it high as an output, the pull-up is enabled. But uh, go look at my other video and see if I'm, I'm right on that. I may be remembering incorrectly. Then I set uh, uh, my sensor time to zero, and I pretty much have a little busy loop that says, uh, while the uh, pin is not, uh, or while it is high, just keep in incrementing the sensor time. And uh, this, this uh, is done with so quickly that we don't really have to worry about sensor time overflowing. Then we turn off the LED. Uh, the final thing that we do is we, if, if scale output has been selected, so I, I was right the first time, if it's anything other than zero, then it will scale the output. And I'm just, I won't go into the math that I did here, but it's pretty simple. I'm just scaling it to a range of zero to 255. If it's, if it's below the minimum, it just makes it zero. And if it's above the maximum, it makes it 255. Because something I've learned from experience is that there will always be exception cases. And so you need to be able to deal with those. Okay, so let's go up to uh, my code now. What I'm doing uh, is I'm doing an initial pass where I'm reading the raw value from the sensor. And I'm just watching for minimum and maximum values that I get. And uh, right now, I'm just manually driving the robot or, you know, holding the robot over the lines and moving it around. 
Uh, the way that Pololu does it, and which is really the way that you would do it in the end, but I didn't feel like doing it, uh, was they have their robot rotate like that over it on its own. Uh, it's easy enough to do. I showed you how to do that in the uh, pulse width modulation video. So uh, I, I find the minimum and maximum, and then when I'm done with that step, now I can say, go ahead and scale the output, and I'm setting scale output to one, and then I'm passing it the minimum sensor reading that I saw and the maximum sensor reading that I saw. And uh, I'm saying I want sensor zero, which works out to be this one right here on uh, this side. So let's take a look at what this does. I've taken a sheet of paper, and if we can go to our overhead camera once again. So I am turning on the robot, and the top line is the raw reading that it is seeing, and uh, the bottom line was a countdown for how many uh, how many units uh, or, or how much time it had left in the calibration routine. Now, uh, hopefully you can read this. It's saying 64 at the moment. Uh, as I pass over the line, looks like our lights are kind of interfering a little bit with it here. Let me try this one more time and I'll hopefully shadow the, uh, process, uh, the sensor. Okay, so normally here I am seeing still about 42. And then it's rising up as I get over the line, it's rising up. I got a 255 there, I saw. The trouble is, is we've got our lights aimed almost <laughs> obliquely to the sensor, so uh, it's screwing it a little bit. But we are seeing uh, a higher value here, about 120, and then if I go off the line, we're getting about 34. When I was programming this in my workshop, uh, I was seeing a zero and a 255. There, I see it, 255, and then dropping down to 32. Anyway, that's a quick tutorial showing a little bit of C coding and uh, a little bit about how to use the robot and the sensors on it. Uh, this is Jack Buffington for Hackaday.com, signing out.